When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. Ciao. I'm Chef Joe Melli, and welcome back to Pasta Amore, Pasta with Love. And on today, as promised from our last video, uh, we are going to be visiting another region of Italy. And specifically, we're going to the northwest corner of Italy to a place called the Cinque Terre. And the Cinque Terre is, uh, as it's translated, it means five lands. Okay, so there are five tiny villages along the seacoast in northwest Italy that comprise the Cinque Terre. And as you might imagine, uh, the, uh, the people of the Cinque Terre make their living mostly by fishing as its proximity to the sea. So uh, it comes to no surprise that the dish we're going to be doing today is a seafood pasta, but not just any seafood pasta, okay? It is going to be a really unique offering that only, only comes from this region, all right? And I'm talking about spaghetti miramare, okay? So essentially, it, it's two things going on here today. We're going to make a seafood pasta dish, and that's going to go in a casserole. But then we're going to finish it by rolling out pizza crust that goes over the whole thing. That gets baked in the oven until golden brown. We take it out and we set it on fire. And we serve it to you that way. It comes to your dining room on fire. And at, at some point, you know, the fire subsides. And then we break that crust. We get into the pasta and enjoy that deliciousness. That is spaghetti miramani. Awesome. So uh, let's begin by talking about the ingredients. Okay, as I said, this is seafood pasta. Okay, and also, if you notice, there's no machines here. We're not making fresh pasta today. We're using dry commercial spaghetti. So the pasta in and of itself is not the star today. The final result is, but the pasta is is a vehicle for this dish. All right. So we are going to use. Now I have. No less, not including salt and pepper, 14 ingredients going into this one dish. I know it seems like a lot. Yes, a lot of these are basic ingredients, but a lot of them are uh, full of what I call umami. Right? We got some anchovies, we got some olives, we got some clams, we got some tuna. We got lots of savory, savory, tasty items going into this dish. So uh, let's begin by uh, heating up our pan, right? We always say that we want a nice hot pan to start uh, sauteing our ingredients. Never add your, your aromatics to a pan that's cold. So I'm going to heat up my pan, and then I'm going to add some extra virgin olive oil. Uh, so being in this region, the region itself is called Liguria, all right? And it has one of the best olive oils in the whole country of Italy. So uh, if you use some Ligurian olive oil to, to do your dish, that's just going to add a little more auth authenticity to your uh, final dish. All right, so we're going to get the, the pans getting hot, right? So the first things we're going to add to it, we're going to start with our aromatics. And the two that I think go hand in hand, uh, two of my favorite culinary ingredients, are garlic and shallots, hands down. Okay, so these two together are going to form the basis of this whole entire sauce. So I'm going to put in, and you want to hear that sizzle too when you add your ingredients to your pan. That tells you right away, pan's hot. Okay, so I got about two cloves of garlic, a half a shallot in here. Okay, and we're going to cook that. We're not going to brown it. Again, we want to keep the bitterness out of here. So we got to be careful not to brown. Already, that waft, uh, the aroma is amazing, okay? So to this, right, we are going to add one of my other favorite ingredients, full of umami anchovies, All right? So I minced them already to a paste. And don't forget, guys, when you open a tin of anchovies, I know it comes packed in oil. Okay, don't drain that off. Use that oil. Look at that, that's like gold right there. That's flavor, all right? Mix it with your other olive oil, okay? That's just further 
strengthening that flavor. All right, so we're going to put in, this is about six to eight anchovies. Mm. So already we got that brininess going on, okay? Next thing we're going to mellow that out, right, and tone it down with a little bit of marsala, okay? Probably about two ounces or so of marsala. This is adding a little sweetness, because marsala is a little bit of a sweet wine, you know that, all right? So, now we get, it's a little sweet, it's a little nutty. So we're going to mellow those flavors out a little bit. And then we're going to add our other aromatic ingredients. You know, in no order, I have two types of olives. I have uh, Italian green and I have uh, like a cured olive, a black and a green, right? So that's like about two ounces of each, right? Capers. So think about the flavor components profile that's going in here. Olives capers, anchovy, garlic, shallots. So think about the pungency of this dish, all right? I do have to hit it with a little pepperoncino, of course. I need a little back of the throat spice, a little back of the throat kick. I'm gonna add to this tuna that's packed in olive oil, okay? Italian tuna, you get it at any Italian importing store and chopped clams. So this sauce is going to have a wonderful body to it. It's going to cling to the pasta. Um, and actually today, I said it's going to be spaghetti, but I like to use what I call percatelli. Percatelli is like a thick spaghetti. Okay. So, uh, similar to like a bucatini without the hole. Um, all right, so we're gonna let that, kind of those flavors all marry in there. And then I'm gonna add uh, about a cup and a half of your favorite uh, marinara sauce, okay? Nothing too complex, straight up, okay? Now this is, obviously you're seeing it's gonna get a little thick on you here. Okay, so what I have at the ready is some clam juice. You can use clam juice, fish stock, lobster stock, any kind of seafood flavored broth, okay? And then, all right, so now all of these things are gonna come, I'm gonna turn my heat down and let it gently simmer, okay? So all of the ingredients, the only thing I don't have in here is a little bit of basilico, a little dry basil, okay? And I think that's all. I didn't add salt and pepper, and I'll tell you why. Think about the ingredients that are in here. Anchovy, salty. Olives, two kinds, salty, briny. Capers, salty, briny, okay? And, uh, tuna, clams, all briny type flavors. So salt is the last thing I'm going to add to this until the end of the dish after I taste it. And then I'll see, uh, I'm going to actually check it now and see where the flavor has gotten to. Okay, so right now, if I was serving this right now, I wouldn't need any salt whatsoever in this dish. I know, for me, that's crazy, because I love salt. I am still going to salt the pasta water, but not as heavily salted as I normally do, okay? So, um, I'm going to let this simmer. I have a pot of uh, water boiling here, okay? So, by the time that my pasta cooks, this sauce will be cooked down enough just to marry the two together. So, what I'm gonna do, big bang going on here, okay, is um, when you open a pot, make sure you always open it away from you, right? You don't want that steam going, getting a steam bath in your face. 
Don't want no facials today. All right, so about this, I'm probably going to do about half of this, okay? Just because that's about all that's going to fit into my, my casserole dish later on, okay? So I'm going to add a little bit of salt to that. Okay, not much more because, like I said, the final dish, I don't want it to be too salty. So immediately uh, after putting in the pasta, I got to stir, make sure they don't stick together. Okay, so this perchatelli, um, not sure, let's see if you can see, I mean, it is rather hearty, thick pasta. Okay, it's like uh, spaghetti on steroid pasta. All right, so uh, I just like this because of the bite that it has to it. And this is a really, really um, uh, aggressive sauce with lots of flavors. This pasta can definitely stand up to that, okay? So, um, now at this, at this point, there's not a whole lot left to this dish or this part of it until the pasta cooks. Okay, so um, now we can take this opportunity to get our dough ready for the final stages. All right, so we're going to make sure we're not sticky. Okay, all right, so I need a nice big area here just to roll out my dough. I have some dusting flour, okay. I have some dough that I pre-made. It's regular pizza dough, bread dough, okay. Um, it's about four to six ounces of dough, okay. And let it, let it rest, let it sit until it's, it's able to manipulate and do what you want it to do, okay. So, um, I have a heavily floured board and, and my, my dough is down and now I'm going to flour the top, okay? And then initially, I'm going to use my fingertips to knock down this dough. Much like making a, starting like making a pizza crust, okay? So when I get it to about here, okay? I got to make sure always that my dough moves on the table. If it doesn't move, there's no way it can stretch. All right, so I have my trusty marble rolling pin here. And I'm going to roll it because I need thin, thin. Now, many people uh, struggle with dough, okay, because so you start playing with dough and it snaps back. It doesn't do what you want it to do. Just remember, it's a living thing. It's got yeast in it, okay? And you got gluten in the, in the flour. So when those two get together, initially you go through the whole uh, mixing, kneading, and you have to have that resting state. You have that proofing where it rises, and then you gotta knock it down, okay? And let it rest again Okay, you have to let that gluten relax. If you try using that dough before it's ready to, I don't care what you do. If you're fussing with dough and it snaps back and it won't, just let it go. Walk away, right? Go have a smoke, walk outside, do whatever. Take your time out, come back, and then you're going to sneak up on that dough and it's going to do what you want it to do. Okay, so I still need to get that a little thinner, but before then, I'm going to check my my pasta. Okay, it's, now it's not totally cooked yet, and I'm going to leave this a little bit more al dente than usual because I want it to cook a little bit in the sauce and absorb that wonderful sauce. Mm. Still a little crunch. Okay, so let's finish rolling out our dough. So look how thin, okay? 
thin because we want it nice and crispy. When this goes over our casserole and it bakes in the oven, uh, we want it to come out crisp, crackle, like a cracker almost, when you break through that crust and get to the pasta. So look at what we have here. It's gorgeous, okay? All right, so I am going to uh, get my casserole dish, and this is what I'm gonna use, All right? So I have to make sure. Okay, so that covers nicely, all right? So we're just gonna leave that there, put this in the center, okay? Do a little house cleaning. And I think my pasta is just about ready to get into the sauce. All right, so I'm going from here to here. I'm not using no uh, scuola basta, as my, as my mother would say and grandmother would say. Scuola basta is a strainer, okay? I like to go right from my pasta water and drag some of that pasta water with me, okay? So you can see now how it's swelled up, right? It's like, like I said, uh, rather large and gorged spaghetti. So we're going to let this, I'm going to turn my heat up on this one a little bit more and let this simmer right in the sauce and absorb some of that beautiful goodness. All right. So that will start to absorb, reduce down, and actually get into the pasta itself, okay? Now, I have my oven at like 450 degrees, okay? And I'm gonna transfer this to here. This is gonna fill up this dish, all right? We're gonna transfer this dough over to here, all right? We're gonna brush it with a little olive oil, all right? Just kind of attach it to the sides, all right? And then we're gonna go right to the oven. Right? And that's gonna take 10 to 15 minutes to get golden brown crust. Okay, when that's done, we pop it out, we put it on another plate because we're gonna light this on fire, okay? I've got a little bit of uh, vodka I'm gonna put on top of my crust. We're gonna light it up, it goes to your dining room, voila, okay, and everybody is amazed, all right? By the time uh, the, the vodka dissipates, the, the flame will be out and we can break into that crust and unearth a wonderful, savory pasta. All right, so toss this a little bit so that everything's coated nicely. Mm, gosh, that's amazing. Right there. And I am ready to I'm gonna shut this off. Shut this off, we no longer need that. Okay, so now I'm gonna transfer. Oh, look at that. I wish you could smell this right now. Better yet, I wish you could taste this right now. Now we wanna finish it, make sure you get all that goodness in there, all those olives and the clams. And the tuna. I say, if you don't like seafood, probably not the dish for you. Okay. All right. So I believe in Italy they do this for two, service for two. Okay. This would be quite a healthy dish. All right. So now we're going to stretch this over. Okay. And I'm just going to trim up my excess. And I'm just going to just, I'm not going to make sure, it's not like it's airtight and it's going to uh, be a perfect fit. Because this is all about rustic. That's what this dish is all about.
So we just go around and we crimp our sides a little bit. Nothing perfect. Our, our pasta is going to be underneath. And that's the other reason I left it a little al dente is so that the heat of the oven is going to further cook this. Okay. So I'm going to do a little squirt of olive oil. I take my brush, paint the top a little bit. Help to give it a nice golden crust. Taco C. And this uh, pasta, the pizza dough recipe is just your basic, whatever you use at home for a pizza dough or a bread dough will work just fine. Okay, so um, it's ready for the oven, okay? I'm going to put this in 450, like I said. It's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes to get golden brown. Then we'll take it out and I'll show you how we proceed with our next step. Okay, so uh, come on back. Make sure you don't miss the most exciting part of this, all right, when this gets served, all right? So uh, I will see you back here in a minute. And hang on, hang tight. Okay, so we've uh, had this in the oven for about 15 minutes, and it's looking perfect. So we're gonna pull this out. Golden brown, PBD as we say and it's got a few little brown spots. Check that out. Okay, it's gorgeous. Now, the reason why I put this on a plate is because this needs to get to the dining room, okay? So we need to have something stable for it to, to be able to carry and one that isn't smoking hot. All right, so it's absolutely gorgeous right now, okay? This is, if you can hear that, but nice and crisp, okay? Golden brown, that's what we're looking for. So the last step we have to do, okay? I have a little bit, we're gonna just do a little bit of this. We're gonna turn on our, and we're gonna light, and this actually goes to the dining room. Okay, and uh, when it gets in front of the guest, by that time, you can see it's already dissipated, but usually it goes to the guest out there, flaming, right? And they get there, it's a big show, it's gorgeous, okay? So the, the next thing that's left to do, all right, so the waiter would come over, and then this is, like I said, usually served for two. So generally, you just break that crust, so listen to that crunch. And you want to lift that. Break it back, okay? And reveal, okay, that goodness inside. Now, you're not coming around with the grated cheese on this dish. Why? Do you remember? No cheese with shellfish seafood in the pasta especially in this case, because of the brininess of all those ingredients mixed with the Parmesan cheese, it gives off a foul, acrid flavor. So if you absolutely must have it, just do it And when I'm not looking, okay? So we have all of that, all the juice has been soaked up into the pasta, right? There's no excess sauce here, right? And if you want, you could break off a piece of this, okay? You could put it on here, I go see. And you could take a bite. Mmm. That's amazing. Mmm. This is really a unique pasta treat. Okay? If you want to wow your friends, have them over for dinner, do this, and I guarantee they'll be you'll be the talk of the town. It's absolutely amazing. The flavors, the presentation, the whole thing. You heard it first here on Pasta Mode, okay? <coughs> That's hot. Next time, we're going to probably take a break and go to visit 
some Halloween pasta treats that you can do with your kids maybe, do with your whole family, and just have a good time uh, with pasta. Once again, gracias tante, ciao, ciao, thanks for watching.